So here we are guys for episode number 13 of this F1 2006 career mode. Today we're off to the Italian Grand Prix for Monza and after this race, believe it or not, there's only three races left to go so this season is well and truly coming to a close now. Either way, we're here for the Italian Grand Prix, round number 13 here, or episode number 13 for this career mode series and um, should be an interesting round for us. We may struggle a little bit in a straight line with our restricted V10 engine. Current standings, uh, Alonso leads, he's no doubt won the championship now. Uh, us, we're in P7, we're seven points behind Fisichella. It's going to take an almighty effort for us to beat him in this round, but um, that's kind of my goal in the next few rounds. If we can edge towards Fisichella and possibly finish six in the standings, that would be a tremendous achievement. I'm a little bit surprised that so far this season I haven't blown up my engine completely. It's... um been interesting to read that you guys say that it's possible for that to happen if you like spam down the gears too much or the engine overheats there's a higher chance of that happening so fingers crossed we never see that happen to us this is exactly what you want a nice decent amount of traffic as you start your qualifying one lap drivers on a flying lap right now are Felipe Massa. what the hell was that pit lane entry either way 26 9 first lap in Q1 What's this P14? Only just squeezed through to Q2 there. Like literally just, but only by a tenth. There were 22, there are now 16. After this session finishes, we'll be down to just 10. Parabolica is an interesting corner for me because when I come into this corner, sometimes you'll come in a little bit too hard, a little bit too fast, and uh, the back end will swap on you, especially if you've got uh, older tires. So that's something we'll need to watch out for in the race. We set a 126.8, just a little bit off of uh, Ralph Schumacher's time there, but we are at least a little bit more competitive than what we showed in Q1. We'll continue with session three of qualifying in a few moments. A little bit lower than what I was expecting, to be honest, but um, when you have a straight line speed deficit and the biggest power track in the world, what, what do you expect? So Fernando gets pole. Just a champion's effort so far this season. He's just so consistent, track to track. Fisichella down at P7. I'm going to hopefully get off to a good start and possibly look to beat him in the race. It's, I know it's a big big target starting from 13th trying to beat a Renault, but I feel like we have a little bit more to offer in the race, so we'll have to see how we go. In terms of the race strategy, I was going to experiment a little bit, but considering we are in a little bit of a pickle for this race, I'm going to leave things fairly conservative and just stop on lap five. We're here at Monza for the Italian round of the Formula One World Championship. We are racing! So it's always a good sign when the engineer predicts or like hopes for retirements up ahead because that usually means it will happen so considering we are starting the second half of the field there is every chance that we could move up a few places just due to retirements themselves so I'm really looking forward to this one. We're going to have to do a lot of overtaking in this race if we want to get inside the points. So it should be should be a really good race, to be honest. All systems confirmed to go for the race. Have fun. Good luck. So 13th place for the Italian Grand Prix. This is one of the more average qualifying efforts I've put up uh, so far this season. But it's going to take an almighty effort for us to move forward in this race and beat... Giancarlo Fisichella. Here we go, ready for the start of this race, the Italian Grand Prix. What can we do in front of the Tifosi? Ten red lights, and away we go for the Italian Grand Prix here in Monza. I need to concentrate for this first corner, though, because we can make up so many places in the turn one. Here come the drivers, plowing into the first corner. Uh, corner cut, but looks like we've been able to get away with that. Into P11 so far, I can see Fisichella, just a few cars up the road. Under the Toyota sign, we pass a Toyota. That is, uh, I don't think uh, the owners of that team will be happy about that, but we move inside the top 10 now, just a couple more places, and we will be in the points. I saw an oil flag, so someone has already retired. Typical. Oh, there was contact there. Oh, Sh Ralph Schumacher, please. I do not need this at the start of the race. Oh, look at the straight line speed. 
I don't know what it is about every single racetrack on this game, but the AI seem to get terrible exits off of the final corner. No matter what track it is, no matter what the corner style is like, they just, they're just always so terrible. But uh, there's a cheeky battle going on up ahead. No way! Into the Retifilio. It's Button. He's out of the race. That's got to be a disappointing result. I can't believe I did that. I honestly cannot believe I just piled into the back of Jensen Button in turn one. There, I lost my braking marker. Um, usually, what I look for coming into turn one is um, the center line in the road. When that comes to an end, that's normally when I start braking. But I just, I just got distracted. Simple as that. I don't know how we managed to survive that incident with Jensen. Like, we managed to crash out in what was it, Germany? Where we lost the front wing. Very slow pit stop here. 18.7 seconds. We did have to do a front wing change there. But we rejoin on the track in what position? It's P17. At least we are still in the race. That is something we can say about this incident. Somehow... We have managed to survive that crash with Jensen Button. But we don't survive. What? Retifilio. It's clean. It's left his front. Oh. What? You know, the timing of me saying that. Yeah, we managed to survive the race. We can carry on. But then we get drilled in the back by a fucking AI car. Are you kidding me? Oh, guys. We we may as well have lost the wheel at turn 1. I mean, why, why give me a glimmer of hope to rejoin the race if you're simply just going to take it away anyway? Nice corner cut from the, to from the Toyota, by the way. Monza never fails to impress, and this season has been no exception. Look at that, guys. Michael Schumacher and Giancarlo Fisichella did not score points in that race there. Oh my god, look at how many people did not finish that race. That's incredible. What was there? Only 12 cars who finished that race? That's a... Uh, that's incredible scenes here for the Italian Grand Prix. I I simply can't episode I can't end the episode on this kind of front. We have to move on to the next one and um, see how we go in that one. At least we didn't lose any points to Fisichella there. But yeah, like I said, let's move on to the next round of the championship. We'll see how we do. Looks like there might have been a cracker of a race as well. It started raining. The news just gets better, guys. The next round of the championship, it's China. Literally one of my worst tracks on the entire F1 calendar. Turn up the sound on your TV. We are only moments away from the start of the Chinese Grand Prix, coming live to you from the Shanghai race circuit. So here we are, guys, for the Chinese Grand Prix. We've skipped forward a couple of days, and this is a brand new day for me recording this. So we've qualified in 10th place. We're also going with a bit of a sneaky strategy here. I read the comments from the previous episode. Um, in between doing the Italian Grand Prix and this one. And what we're going to do is, we're going to stop on lap 9. So with 3 laps left to go in this race, we're going to stop and run 3 laps to the end. You guys said the best strategy would be to run towards the end of the race and then have light fuel at the end. So that's what I'm opting to do. And um, hopefully the strategy can work out for us here this time. And who knows? If we can avoid the idiots, then maybe we'll get on the podium or maybe even the top five. All systems confirmed to go for the race. Have fun and good luck. Thank you, engineer. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new race for us here. The Chinese Grand Prix, starting from P10, we have a potentially winning strategy up our sleeve to deal with these AI in this race. So just waiting for everyone to grid up now. Surely that is everyone now. And we will get this Chinese Grand Prix underway. As it stands right now, it's been a few days since I've played this game, so I I'm really excited to get this race underway. Ten red lights. And it's off we go for the Chinese Grand Prix. Let's watch all these idiots take each other out into turn one, hopefully. Have been playing a little bit of NASCAR, but um, I don't know. Maybe I'm being a bit optimistic here. Into turn one. Make contact there with Nick Heidfeld. I've lost a bit of my front wing. Wasn't really concentrating there. I guess we'll have to just move on and forget about that. Uh, looking inside, looking outside. It's probably going to have to wait till we get to the middle sector now. We're looking up the inside of Montoya here. Waiting for any gaps to emerge. Looks like the AI is pretty strong through this sector, at least through that left right hand up. Oh. 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 <laughs> Getting really close here with the AI. Heidfeld defense to the left hand side, so we're going to go clean around the outside. And almost get within overtaking distance of Jensen Button there. Now... 
we sneak onto this long right hander, the snail section, and we'll see just what our traction compares to the AI. Get off the grass, Ben. That's not where you want to be. Seventh gear. And, uh, yeah, this will be the opportunity for the AI. Up the inside goes Nick Heidfeld, and we're going to smash past him under break. So we'll need to watch out for that. The AI, as we've seen all, all throughout this season, we are so OP under break. So we're going to make use of that because we do have a straight line speed deficit. So between us and the AI, there's always different areas that we can improve on and different areas that we achieve our lap time. And, if, and for us, it's under brakes. End of lap one, we're in P7 at the moment. About eight laps now until our pit window. Oh shit, there goes Heidfeld. Yes, and we squeeze past Jensen Button there, back into P6. Oh, around the outside of Michael Schumacher, there is wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact there. Surprised I didn't lose a bit of my front end plate there and possibly gave Schumacher a puncture. However, this game isn't that realistic. We go through this snail section again, run a little bit wide there. And now we're going to try and set up a move on Felipe Massa, tuck into the slipstream, and he's going to get an even bigger gap by the time we get to the braking zone. It's going to be more about defending from Schumacher than what it is attacking Massa. There goes Schumacher. And now we've got to get past him again in the braking zone. Inside, outside, it'll be outside. Thank you very much. And all of a sudden, we... Jeez, we overtook Massa there, but we made contact. Unbelievable how slow the AI are sometimes through those slow corners. There goes Massa. Oh, jeez, that was close. Believe it or not, there was no contact there. And around the outside of Massa we go. Doesn't really leave our space. I wasn't really asking him to. But if he was going to close the door, there might have been contact, and there was. Massa slow. Massa way too slow. I swear, the AI is so much slower in front of you as opposed to when they're not directly in front of you. It's a bit of like the, the Codemaster Syndrome where the AI, when they're directly in front of you, when you're directly racing them, they are quite substantially slower. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just annoying when you're trying to battle them. Around the outside of Schumacher we go. Fairly easy to defend from that. But now it's just a, it's just a case of working over Felipe Massa now. Left rear tyre is now starting to fade. I think I've been a, a little bit too harsh on the uh, on the rear tyres. Uh, traction control is down is turned down to like its minimum setting. So I still have traction control to some degree, like these 2006 cars should. But the traction is turned down a little bit. So there is the potential to still get wheel spin, which I feel is fairly realistic. Now the right rear looks like there's some drama occurring at turn 11. It's Massa. So we're now into the pits on lap three for a surprise pit stop. Um, yes, well coming back to this game, I, I remember now how OP the AI in terms of breaking early they are. It's just ridiculous. Sometimes, I don't know if it's my fault or not, but I, I could have I broke early there, but just the AI, sometimes in the slow corners, it breaks so ridiculously slowly. 17.9 second stop there, not the best, but we did have a front wing change there. Like, like I was saying before guys, the AI, they break ridiculously slowly into some corner sometimes. And um, yeah, that just happens sometimes. I can only apologise about that. No excuses. So on the following lap now, a lot of cars are in the pits, so this is going to mitigate the disadvantage we lost by coming in very early. So um, hopefully we can still challenge quite well here in the points. We get around the outside of Kultab there and move into 14th place with still a lot of cars left to make their stops yet. More cars are in the pits, I'd say three or four cars are in. That's probably going to elevate us towards the top 10 These, if these guys get a slow exit, leaving the pits. So next up is uh, Yuji Ide who surely has not stopped yet. And then in front of him is Heidfeld. So that's a little bit more of a representative look at who should be inside the top 10. Can we get him around the outside? Come on, come on, come on, come on. In the mid corner isn't a strength of this uh, Toro Rosso. We do get a lot of understeer, but somehow we swoop around the outside of Heidfeld. On warmer tyres, we've got him, and inside the top 10 we go, but his straight line speed will prove effective for him. He moves back into P10, but we're going to slide up the inside into this braking zone. He moves over in the braking zone. Not a smart idea to do when there's such a closing distance. Thank you, engineer. 
It's, uh, it's not a good idea to move in the breaking zone when you're an AI, and you break significantly earlier than what the player does. That's just asking for an incident. But even more cars are coming into the pits. Where do we move up to now? Is it the top six, maybe? Seventh place. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> oh my god, I did not even see Heidfeld there. Even there, you can see how much ground we make up in the braking zones. You know, if even if I do miss a braking zone, just by a little bit, 10, 20 meters, it can turn into a disaster in the blink of an eye if I'm not concentrating. So, it, it's, it's almost a wonder as to why we haven't had more incidents with the AI, especially like on first lap stuff. Like, look at that right there, up the inside of Button. No, that wasn't Button, that was Montoya. Now, turn one. This is a corner where we get overtaken a lot, so I'm going to try and hug the inside line if I can. No, no, I can't even stick to the inside line. The car just pushes out wide. But luckily for us, Montoya doesn't sneak up the inside, and we hold on to P6. So there's a bit of a gap now to Jensen Button, the car ahead. Um, we're going to try and push as much as we can and close that gap in the final four laps. The left-hand side of the car, as in the working side tyres, are now starting to fade. Lime green for those, and uh, just three laps left to go. This second set of tyres have actually fared a lot better than the first set we put on. I mean, those that set of tyres was like fading after three laps. This set has gone already nine laps. Button is fifth. You're sick. Oh, are we going to sneak around the outside of Jensen? Maybe. No, no. We've run out of grip. Run out of talent there. We're going to have to wait possibly until the third sector. There's not been many retirements actually this race, apart from Massa, who we obviously put out of the Grand Prix, and I'm guessing the yellow flag just then was for another car who retired, so only two retirements so far in this Grand Prix. That is a, a much better failure rate. Yeah, I'm going to say failure rate compared to previous Grand Prix. Oh, Jesus. We're fairly close to Jensen here. We could sneak it up the inside. This would be very, very cheeky, but I feel like the distance is not so great. We dive to the inside, bit of contact on the apex, but we were alongside enough, and we move into position five with just one lap left to go. Michael Schumacher has clawed his way up to position four. There is oil flags up ahead, so I'm going to get off the racing line here, and hopefully that should be enough. Jensen, he's going to be mighty strong heading into turn one. This has always been a weakness for me so far this Grand Prix, and it should be even more of an issue, considering my tyres are going off the cliff. Ran wide a bit there, that was my fault. More oil flags, I see someone with an engine failure! I've lost it on the grass, on the, on the grass? On the oil, and that was Schumacher again! Schumacher having so many engine troubles this season, it's an absolute joke. We get a free position, and move up into P4. Just two sectors left in this Grand Prix to go. There it is, Alonso crosses the line in first place and earns a well-deserved 10 points. Fisichella will finish the race in second. Here we go, final corner guys. We're going to come home in fourth place. Alonso, he has won another race. What an incredible season Fernando Alonso is having. He's, he's pretty much got double the points of everyone in this entire championship. What an incredible drive from Alonso so far this season. Us, we got very lucky after the couple of incidents we had. We finished in P4, and that's very solid points to take away from the Chinese Grand Prix, considering the amount of incidents we had. What a race, wonderful stuff. Shanghai has provided yet another fabulous Grand Prix for us to absorb. I couldn't help but notice there were seven Michelin tired cars inside the top eight. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, or maybe because of uh, failures that kind of skewed the results there a little bit. But let me know down in the comments which of the tire, two tire compounds are the better ones to run with. Is it Michelin or is it Bridgestone? Let me know in the comments. That could also be a consideration that I that I have a look at when choosing next season's team. So once again, guys, I want to say thank you for watching. Fourth place in the Chinese Grand Prix. Fairly good recovery drive after what was a bit of a disastrous Chinese Grand Prix. Next round, uh, it's going to be the penultimate round of the season. And then after that, we're off to the finale in Brazil. So two episodes left in this season. Make sure you smash that like button if you're enjoying the series so far. And um, before you know it, this season will be over. Thank you guys for watching. Until my next video, guys, I will see you next time. Renault F1 team are the new Constructors Champions. As if we didn't know that already. <laughs>